Hey, what's up guys? I recently got the Generation 2 Ring Alarm Home Security Kit and I did an unboxing and setup video for that. I'll put a link in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And don't forget to take a second to hit that subscribe button below. Don't worry, I'll wait. Alright, let's continue. So, I got a lot of great questions saying like, well, what are the differences between Gen 2 and Gen 1? So, the main differences are you get this new keypad, the buttons are more spaced apart, and you get three dedicated panic buttons. You get one for the police, one for firefighter, and one for the medical ambulance. So if you hold any one of these three for three seconds, it'll call the appropriate authorities. But for, the, for these panic buttons, you actually have to have the ring protect plan for it to actually call for help. If you don't have that, then it's not going to call for help. Now, the other differences are that most of these parts are around 30% smaller in comparison to Generation 1. But as far as level of security, it's actually exactly the same level of security that you get with Generation 1. So just something to keep in mind. So another question I got was, are these parts backwards compatible? And yes, they are. So if you like this keypad and you just want to get this keypad, you can actually just order this and set it up with your Generation 1, assuming you have Generation 1, and it will work with it. If you like the smaller sensors, you can get the smaller sensors. If you want to add more motion detectors, you could get the Generation 2, and it's pretty much backwards compatible. So that's that. Now, is it worth upgrading to this? Well, it's all a matter of personal preference. Do you like this keypad? Do you want it a little more aesthetically pleasing? It's totally up to you. You're gonna get the same level of security, but it is backwards compatible. So if power goes out, will it call for help? Well, if you have the Ring Protect plan, the base station actually has up to a 24 hour battery backup and it has its own cellular connection that has nothing to do with your cell phone. And the way you could check that is on your cell phone on the Ring app, you can actually see the cellular strength and its own battery. So technically you have up to 24 hours that it, it can call for help. So that would work. Now, because you need the ring protect plan for it to call for help, how much is the ring protect plan? Well, it depends. It's either $10 a month if you pay monthly, or if you're paying yearly, it's $100 up front, which comes out to $8.33 a month. Now, I personally think it's worth it because other than professional monitoring, that also includes if you get Ring cameras, it will also record and keep the data on the cloud for 60 days. So as long as they're all at one address. So I, I personally think it's worth it, but it's up to you. Now, do you need the Ring Protect plan to get the Ring Alarm system? No, you don't. If an alarm gets triggered, it'll just notify you on your phone. So it won't actually call for help, it'll, it'll notify you. So you don't technically need it, but I would recommend getting it because I think it's pretty affordable, especially compared to the competition. So how long does the battery last on the keypad? So I did a quick search on ring.com and it said it lasts from anywhere from six to nine months, but it depends on usage. But it didn't actually say if that was for generation one or generation two, but even if that was for generation one, I'm assuming generation two will last as long, if not longer. But I'm thinking in a real world case, they'll probably last three months or so and you know, for me that's fine, especially that you, it pops off and pops on super easily and it charges in like an hour or something or less. So I think that's very reasonable numbers. Will Ring Alarm notify me if a window or door is open if I'm trying to arm it? And can I arm it? So I'm going to demonstrate this. And I'm going to turn it off. So yes, it lets you set the alarm, but it tells you it requires a bypass. So it's actually notifying you that something is open, which is a really nice feature. The keypad does light up and it does have a motion sensor inside to detect when you're nearby. So I turned off some of the lights to demonstrate this for you guys. So with my hand, if I bring it about like a foot away or so, it detects it and it turns on. With my body, I could be a little bit farther behind and it'll detect it a little bit sooner, obviously, because it's bigger. And I'll demonstrate that right now. So you could see that I'm a little bit farther away and it detected it. So it does detect it and it does automatically light up. Here's the proximity sensor from close up. So you could see that it lights up. So it's actually pretty cool because the panic buttons light up the corresponding row. So you could see that. And when everything's lit up, it dims that so it, it kind of makes it 
So what are the ways of arming and disarming your system? So there's several ways of doing it. So one of the ways is obviously with the keypad. So you enter your four digit pin and then you arm it. Another way of doing it is if you click the home button from here, from the ring app, or you could press away and it actually doesn't and it actually doesn't require a pin because you're already logged into your app. And the third way is if you ask Alexa to do it. So if I say, Alexa, arm ring. Home and home ring alarms and armed and stay mode. Alexa, disarm ring. What's your voice code for ring alarm? One, two, three, four. Ring alarm is disarmed. There you go. So there's three ways of doing it. So can I define what disarmed and home mode and away mode is? Yes, you can have certain sensors enabled, certain sensors trigger things. You can pretty much customize all that. You can customize your exit time. So you have like 60 seconds to exit once you arm it or 30 seconds or 120 seconds. So everything is pretty much very customizable in the app. What are some of the things, some, what are some of the ways of triggering the alarm? Well, one, motion detector is one. Another way is, so when you put contact sensors, when you put it on your primary door, you assign it to your primary door. And what that means is when you open the door, you have a certain amount of time to disarm the system before it goes off. But if you put a contact sensor on a window or a secondary door, a place where you normally don't exit, the siren goes off right away. So the alarm goes off right away. And that's pretty much telling you there's a break-in. So there's a few ways you can assign it. And finally, can I have more than one pin to arm and disarm the system? Yes, you can. You can have several. In fact, this one, two, three, four is a guess one that I made up. And you can even actually set when it's valid. So I could say, oh, it's valid only from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's, if it's outside of those hours, it won't arm or disarm the system, which is actually pretty cool. So hopefully with that, I've answered all the questions. If you guys have any additional questions, please leave it in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all my current subscribers. And if you're not a current subscriber, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Don't worry, I'll wait.